anybody else because if you're sloppy in those other two areas, you're going to be a sloppy player too, as talented as you might be. So you have to have those other areas. It really can't be one out of two. It's got to right, be two right. out of two in order to become the good player. So if you don't translate this and how you are at home, you know, some really good players we've had here were disrespectful at home to parents or guardians. They've been suspended from basketball here until the family has told me that they get it and they're acting again the way they're supposed to. So like you asked me why guys stay in it, how powerful is, is what I can do? I have an unbelievable power. Like uh, Mel Brooks said, it's good to be the king. This is the position I have and that's something that you want to utilize and because I'm so old now, the kids think of me as being somewhat like a, uh, not a grandfather, but I'm some kind of like deity perhaps because I've been doing this for so long and I get, like when the college kids come in, they see this weird relationship I have. I have a huge, usually strong relationship with the older kids and this relationship now not so good. I'm, ne I'm never sure of them. Till the day they go out the door and they, go, they transition from high school to college, I can't be sure because I know what's going on outside this building here, you know? And then when they go away, you know, we can relax. Coach, um, these, this society here we're in today is so charged up about sex. These kids who are 12, 13, 14 years old, they love basketball, but they're distracted by the, uh, by the member of the opposite sex. Um, how do you get that across to them to try to get them on the page so they can accomplish what they need to have accomplished and kind of forget about girls? Yeah, well, you know, we talk first of all about like their level of maturity and that they're, they know when I talk about all the things I want to hold them responsible for, how they fall short in a lot of areas. They just don't have the maturity to handle everything. As they get older, they get better at things. I point towards their own lives, kids that are being raised right now in single parent households, okay? Uh, not having the, the family unit, how, how much of a struggle it is when you don't have like a male in the house to talk to about things that guys like to talk about. And you'd like to talk to your grandmother or your, your mom about something, but they might be working a good portion of the time. So I think what we try to do is my wife's around a lot. And I talk all the time about the relationship between, you know, the relationship of, you know, uh, this, is, this is Mrs. Hurley, we've been married almost 40 years. They see, like, she'll come into the gym. I stop everything when she comes into the gym, run over to see if she, I need, she needs something. Uh, I, I want them to see what happens in a marriage, like between a, like between a husband and a wife, because they don't always see that. I want them to see my family. So my family's always been involved in this stuff. My daughter, Melissa, has a relationship with all of the kids in school, all the kids in college. She's, she's texting Mike Rosario and Tyshawn. She's at all the games. She comes to all the games. Right, so right, I right. want them to see family unit. And then I drift a little bit because I tell them how immature they are. And I tell them I would rather they were members of the Latin Kings than have a steady girlfriend. And then I talk about how get to college, you know, you get to college, it's like I talk about Bobby's social life growing up in Jersey City. It was play ball, play ball, play ball. He'd say to my, uh, he'd say to my wife, I'm going to go to party tonight down in whatever neighborhood. And my wife says, no, you're not. And he'd throw his hands up and say, why not? He says, well, you really can't tell me who's going to be at that party. And then she'd, she'd say to me, uh, uh, Dad, uh, you know, do you think Bobby should go to that party down in that neighborhood? And I'd say, like, what are you, nuts? And then I would go back to doing what I'm doing. And that would be the end of it. He got to, gets to college, and then I have him talking to the kids a little bit younger, saying about, you know, forfeit your high school social life because the streets and stuff that's going on, kids making bad decisions, don't get pulled into any of that stuff. But when you get to college, it is just a great experience. You meet people, you know, th there's so many opportunities to expand yourself. You know, you know you're probably are not going to marry someone you meet when you're 15 years old. And do you want to have, do you, would you, or if you did not have a father, would you want to be, see someone else be in the same situation? Yet it's happening. It's happening now. It didn't happen before. It's happening. But I can only envision what's happening in a place where you don't have values pushed on you all the time. And I think it's, I said this all the time, I grew up in 19, I graduated high school in 1965. I listened to the Beach Boys. Uh, the song that I can remember, I, I tortured the kids here at St. Anthony's with the song, Be True to Your School, which is a school about guys from two different schools are bragging about how good the teams are at their schools, and they go through this whole process. 
the music that they listen to now is disrespectful to women. The, 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 the sexual overtones and stuff is terrible. The videos, the movies, everything that's out there, the violence in the video games, not easy to be in a kid. As many things as, you know, for the flat screen TV, I'll still take the little black and white television watching the World Series, you know, or having their transistor radio in my ear trying to hide it so I could listen to the, you know, the afternoon game in the World Series when the Braves were playing the Yankees in right. 1957 and, you know, when uh, Warren Spahn was pitching. Those things are vivid memories. I don't know if the kids have those same things now because, you know, the Blackberry, the iPod, the video games, the, uh, you know, the amount of things going on in their lives, they're not allowed to be kids. We play games like we do stuff in the gym with the kids and I'll say to them, all right guys, uh, uh, you can't come up with a thing here, choose. And the kids will walk up to each other and they don't even know how to choose. They don't even know how to choose, I when, know. When the kids pick teams, when I was a kid and you're in the park and you pick teams, it made no difference who your friends were. You went right down the line, the best guys got picked. And if, if your best friend was gonna have to take winners or play next game, so be it, because this was the way teams were picked. They'll line up in the gym. There could be a McDonald's All-American standing on line and he doesn't get picked because somebody else would pick his friend first. And we sit there and we say, guys, like how competitive are you? I mean, it's nice to have a friend, but the friend is really for the time outside of when you want to be great. And it's, it's a very different world, right? So is it more coaching, more teaching, more almost, values, clarification? Almost, I, I almost think more, more, time. Work more social work now. No more social work. Yeah, I think I, I think I give, I'll give a, a kid a little more time now before I uh, will blow him up. And I use, always have used the assistant coaches over the years to convince me to keep people. We've gotten to the point where Ben Gamble is actually on a kid that I had to suspend from the team for the, until next September just for not showing up on things. Ben had given up on him two weeks ago. It took me two weeks longer. It's never like that. It's usually Ben is trying to keep me, you know, from getting rid of the kid. But on, on certain situations here, I'm even like looking deep into background and saying, wow, troubled kid. But at the same time, private school, responsibility to the other kids. You can't go long. So, you know, what we do, and I don't know if everybody can do it, we sign the kids to a contract. And the contract in there has rules. Vars uh, vars my varsity kids sign a contract. And the varsity contract would be curfew, hanging out on the streets, alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, uh, you know, academic issues, haircuts, jewelry. And then we leave the general thing of uh, moral turpitude, that anything that considers behavior that's unacceptable would result in you being suspended from the team. Uh, you know, we've urine tested entire teams in the last I guess we started back in 97 with, with Anthony Perry and Rashawn Berno's team. We tested an entire team, 15 kids. And the first time we went to the program to do it, the man from the program said, he said, there's no way if you take 15 high school kids without any notice whatsoever and you test that you're not going to have three or four that are going to have at least be, at least have marijuana in the screen. So I said, if there's one, I'm going to feel terrible. There was 15 for 15 were negative. One kid ultimately, who we thought was getting involved in something, ultimately tested the next time. I picked a couple of kids. I suspended him from the team. I put him into drug treatment in a very good local program. He didn't complete treatment. He never came back to the basketball team. And he hasn't had as productive an adult life as the other kids, who I think that particular test was good for them all. Because it's when I, when I used to be a probation officer, the guys used to always say, if they went to a party on a Friday or Saturday night, I can't get high because Mr. Hurley's testing me Monday. And now if a kid goes to a party and they need a reason why they don't do something, they're not strong enough. You know, you want to be able to say, I'm okay, I'm cool. No, no, I'm cool. If you can't do that, then you can say, well, Mr. Hurley tests us. And I got practice tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. If I get high, he's going to know. And you know, he was a probation officer. So I'm a good out for them when they're not strong enough themselves to do that. You know, and I hope these, you know, high school coaches that we're, you know, that we're talking to can, can look a little deeper into, into what's going on. Because every, sometimes you're going to find a lethargy. You see a performance change in school. You see some issues with appearance that change, you know. And those things mean, when you see changes like that, it usually means that the kid is starting, he's drifting away from the way he was, was functioning. And you need to, 
jump right in and address that with parents.